Oh, wow, you just pulled it off. That's why you've got to build me a door. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you the plan. Okay. Here's what I have. I have some stock seedlings. And I have some snapdragons. And here is where I want to be planting them. That part I'm saving for Lysianthus. I need to move this tote, or I'd like your help moving it if you could. It's filled with water and ice. Okay, you can go. I'll fix your zipper. Okay, that would be great. Here's where we need to carve stairs into. <laughs> it's more like a hill. Yeah. Um, I need more soil. Okay. I'll stop by Home Depot after the dog park. Okay. Tired out from the dog park? Yeah, <laughs> Still looks ready to go. <laughs> Can you get two of those? Yes. Chingy. Hey, come here. Thank you.
I'm just about to get started on some gardening chores, but first let me catch you up on some of the things that I've been doing lately. Yesterday was a big day. I planted out some snapdragons and some stock seedlings. I have the Madame Butterfly snapdragon seedlings in there, just a few of them. I have a lot more still indoors getting bigger. They're quite small and I haven't pinched them off yet. Um, they're so small I just figured I'd go ahead and plant them. It was quite a dreary day so I didn't have to really worry about the sun intensity, but I do hope they did well overnight with the cold temperatures. That might have been a shock to them coming from the warm indoors of my office. But I got those all planted up. I'm about to take a look at them to see how well they fared overnight. And I forgot to water them in yesterday, or I didn't forget, I chose not to water them in yesterday just because I ended up getting around to it so late in the day that I didn't want to, you know, pour all that water in there and risk some damage with a frost. Although I think it only experienced a light frost in there. I got them planted in so late because we had to go and buy some more soil. Because the ground in there is pretty stiff, it's pretty um, icy still, I just decided to pile up with a little bit of soil until the rest of that ground thaws out, which I think it will be doing. It definitely gets pretty warm during the days and um, the first layer of the ground there has already melted off. It's just that I had a lot of wood chip mulch in there that I wanted to push aside and get to growing. The reason why you don't necessarily want to be planting into a lot of wood chips is because as the wood chips break down, it's a big carbon source and it requires nitrogen. So you need carbon and nitrogen to break down organic things typically, or that's just like the gist of it, that's the summary. And wood chips are a lot of carbon, so they're going to be taking in all that nitrogen, competing with any seedlings or plants that are growing in there and that really require the nitrogen to um, establish itself, to grow it, their leaves. Really the bulk of that initial growing phase needs a lot of nitrogen. So not the best idea to be planting your seedlings in a thick layer of mulch. At the surface, of course, it's totally fine. Typically an inch is fine. Because these are like such small seedlings, uh, their roots aren't going very deep just yet, I decided to just clear out the mulch. Anyway, they're in there, but before I get out there, I wanted to pot up some of my um, brassicas. These are winter boar kale, and they're just like, you know, two to a cell. I figured I might as well pot them up before I bring them out there to harden off. I probably have a bunch more brassicas I could pot up in the garage, so I'm gonna go down there and check as well. And then I think I'm gonna take the fertilizer out with me to fertilize those plants in the ground. The ranunculus and anemone, I checked up on them yesterday while I was planting out the snapdragons and the stock, and they're looking great. Like, they're looking pretty healthy. Later on, I also want to start a bunch more seedlings. There's rudbeckia that I wanna start, um, asters, um, a Chinese forget-me-not, Gumfrina. I'll look through my bin of seeds and see what else. Mostly seeds that are, mostly flower seeds are on my mind right now, but there might be some more vegetables that I could get started. Oh, yesterday also, while we were picking up the soil from the store, I also got um, some onion sets. It wasn't necessarily, I would have liked to have grown um, Walla Walla onions, those sweet onions that do well in northern climates, but um, I just didn't I didn't think I would have space so I didn't have any seeds on me I didn't start any seeds as early as I would have wanted to the sets hopefully will give them a head start So I'm gonna get those started today as well I am just gonna go ahead and get started and see if I can get a lot done today <laughs> Here's what I got from those two six packs, those two small six packs, I got 11 seedlings each from broccoli and winter boar kale. And I've got a bunch more brassicas downstairs in the garage that I'll get to this evening. Right now, I'm gonna go check on the seedlings in the hip house. Chidi, are you gonna come with me? Gonna go outside? 
He just loves following me around when I'm inside or outside. Sometimes he goes outside and then just stares at me through the window. He was expecting me to go out with him. Okay, we'll go together, Juke. We'll go together. It looks like they all did fine. I forgot the fertilizer inside, so I'm just gonna give them a water. Okay, so everything in the hoop house is looking really good. I'm about to start some seeds. I'm gonna soil block them. Um, I'm gonna do poppies and rudbeckia. The varieties that I have are this black peony poppy, which is really gorgeous, really like, I don't know, just full blooms. Peonies do really well here in Alaska as well, like actual peonies. The only thing is, is that they're so expensive and they take a long time to grow. They're pretty slow growers. It's really a few years before they start producing any blooms. I have some in my landscape. Hopefully they'll be doing good. I don't think any blooms this year. Hopefully they'll veg up this year and then maybe next year I'll get blooms. I have this poppy called Amazing Gray. This is one that I'm the most excited about. It's just beautiful. I have Iceland poppy. Um, it's champagne bubbles mix. Johnny seeds. Um, for Rudbeckia, I have Indian Summer. There's no picture on this, but it's the really gorgeous yellow ones. And Cherry Brandy. It's dark red. These, I think, take a while to grow. I'm anticipating having a hard time with these only because our season is so short and these are, I think, heat loving. My neighbor grew some um, Rudbeckia really well last year. So maybe I'll ask him for some advice. So for seed blocking this time, because I've had some poor results, you know, especially with the snapdragons, those didn't do well. Everything else did pretty decently well. I am gonna be using this new seed starting mix that I got. It's seedling mix from Elm Dirt. They sent this out to me, they reached out to me on Instagram um, and I looked up their company and it seems like a company that I do want to support. They were originally a worm farm and branched out into creating these other products. I got a few fertilizers from them as well and soil amendments, which I'm very excited to be using this season. I'll, I'll be talking about them more in an upcoming video, but I really wanted to use this. It says it can be used for um, in cell packs or for soil blocking. The potting mixes that I've used um, just haven't really been doing great. I've had hit and miss with all of the uh, potting mixes that I've used for seed starting this year. Some of them, the plants just did not do well in. That's where, even when I transplanted those soya blocks into a mix, I forgot exactly what I was using. I think it was pretty old, but they just weren't doing well. The soil was looking like this reddish crusty color on top. So I'm hoping those will, you know, hold on until I can plant them out. This I'm very hopeful for. This mix, the ingredients, it says it's a proprietary blend of worm casting, coca coir, azomite, and perlite. Worm casting is really good. Um, it's a really good source of nutrients for seedlings especially. It doesn't burn your seedlings and it's very natural and sustainable to get. Azomite, um, I'll probably look this up a little bit later, but I'm pretty sure I mean, what comes to mind for me is like it's rock dust. So I think azomite contains a lot of these trace minerals that are just naturally found out in good soil. And so I think it will just make for healthier plants overall. Okay, I think that first pour just had a little too much perlite in it. I think the perlite just found its way to the top and these smaller particles, which I'm guessing is the worm castings, the coca coir, um, the azomite I think is just dust in it, but I think those all settled to the bottom. So I'm just giving it a bit of a mix in this bag and I'm gonna see if I can get a more even mixture coming out now. I'm actually just gonna be scooping 
from the bottom. I'm just gonna get some water in this. I am gonna see, I'm gonna give it a test try first and see if having all of this perlite, these big chunks of perlite is okay for how small of a soil blocker I have. Like this is, they're pretty small soil blocks and I wonder if all the perlite is gonna get in the way of them like holding shape. And if it doesn't look right on those first few tries, I think I'll just add some more coca coir, hydrated coca coir. I have some on hand, thankfully, so it'll be really quick. I'm just putting in a little bit more water. For soil blocking, you do want it decently wet. You want a little bit of um, water to seep out when you squeeze it in your hand. Okay, and I'm just gonna try this out, see how it looks like, see how the soil blocks turn out. Okay, I did four because I am not the world's best soil blocker. Um, and I think the last one I did turned out really well. This was the last one I did. It turned out the neatest, I think. And I, these are holding together pretty well. On one of my Instagram posts, my friend Jesse commented <laughs> that I soil block with a white sweater on. Um, and I decide to do it again. I don't know why, not on purpose, but it's gonna get messy for sure. I uh, did that thing seven times, so, and there was 20 blocks per cell, so seven times 20, 140. There's 140 soil blocks in this. And I'll put a link in the description to Elm Dirt's website so you can check it out as well. Um, it looks really good. To be honest, my hands were so, um, there was so much on my hands afterwards, just washing it off. I felt really bad <laughs> that I'm putting all that um, worm castings to waste. And I'll show you the progress of these seedlings as well to show you how this seed mix works. forget where I'm planting everything. I'm just going to make a key for myself and stick it onto the side of this. Both peonies and rudbeckia require light to germinate, so I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this vermiculite on top, spray it with some water, and then put it under lights. I'm keeping my soil blocks here. It's in the closet that I've set up in my office. The closet of my office, I have another grow light hanging here. It's bigger, so I'm just lying things out on the floor. I think I'll put, well, let me move my hand bag. This is what I just planted. I think I'll put something underneath it just to prop it up, get closer to the light. It's kind of getting shaded out by some other things. Um, my tomatoes are over there. Some status and celosia are in here, these soil blocks. 
that I started a few days ago. They're already starting to germinate. My pepper that I overwintered, that their leaves are looking a bit gray. So I'm gonna try a few things and see what can work to make it better. Um, and some violas that I have here. Breaststroke viola and uh, frizzle sizzle blue yellow swirl. It's always like a tongue twister for me to say these names. Okay, so I'm gonna get going. I think I'm gonna just try and organize some of my seedlings. Um, just, I don't know, organize my thoughts on what more there is to do. Hopefully I'll be getting some more things planted out in the hoop house soon. I still have some other snapdragons. I still have more stock and those other ranunculus that I haven't gotten planted out just yet. And then once I have a lot more things planted out in the hoop house, I'll start sowing those um, warmer season flowers, zinnias, cosmos, I'm not sure what else. Some things that I still want to get started quite soon is gomfrina. I have bluplurum. still have those kohlrabi that I've been wanting to sow. <laughs> those kohlrabi seeds. Ugh, I need to get started on sowing some more lettuce. My lettuce seeds are just having the worst germination. I don't know what it is. I might try this um, new seedling mix that I have, see if that works any better for it. It might just be that the seeds are old. I don't know. I'll do some more research too. Maybe I'll keep them out in the garage to germinate. Maybe they just need it a little bit cooler. Um, and then soon, I think, maybe in a week or two, I'm going to start planting out, I think I'm going to directly plant out some carrot seeds onto that patio planter that I have up on the deck. It has um, a low tunnel cover over it, so I think things will grow really well in there, things that can withstand the frost for the next month or so. But yeah, still a lot to be doing. It's... It's a pretty exciting time of the year. Everything's getting going. More things are happening. It's a transition time. <laughs> now I have to let go of that uh, more carefree time where I could just baby all of my seedlings and just really have to start pumping things out a little bit quicker. So I'll work on all that and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.